Welcome to Sports and Touring. You join us here today at Crown Cars and Coffee. We drove down here with SCC private members. We're in their own dedicated paddock area here. There's some amazing cars. But our morning didn't start here. It started somewhere else. Yeah, it was really fun. So let's catch up on that. Damani, he's back on the channel. I've missed you. I've missed you too. He's been away at uni. How's that going? Yeah, really good. Only got a couple of weeks left now, fingers crossed. Well, today, Damani is not driving the RA. And of course, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check the link in the description. In fact, today, we are meeting up with a few other people and we are heading on a drive down to Crown Cars and Coffee. So let's enjoy the drive. I've been watching Daily Driven Exotics for years. This is just like a freezing cold British version of it. It's not as good, but it's epic because we're actually in it. Surprisingly good. This is just too much fun. So we just got here to Crown Cars and Coffee. We're here with SCC. Yeah, it was an awesome drive here. And uh, I think we should go and have a quick look around at the cars that are here as well. SCC particularly have their own area set aside. We've got quite a few interesting cars. Marnie nearly wet himself over a McLaren 675 LT. Yeah. And quite frankly, I got the fizz too. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we've just uh, walked away from the SCC area and if you notice why we're not going to stop constantly talking because there's copyrighted music playing in the background. So Tamani is just salivating over the ACR here. Ah, oh, this is honestly one of my dream dream cars, one of my favourite cars of all time. Just had a brief chat with the owner, one of two in the UK and the other one's a track only car. And this is like, must be worth a crazy amount over here. Never seen one in person before. Uh, and here's that 675 LT, honestly stunning car. The colour, perfect spec, almost perfect. If only, if only it had the carbon side blades, then it'd be my perfect spec. It's even had some MSO touches in the interior, like the little turn dials and the matching green. And oh, honestly, what a car. To see that and the ACR like in the same place. I think he's going to have to sit down in a minute. 
I think this is my favourite modern McLaren. Obviously, we don't count the F1, that's just in a class of its yeah. own, but... I sure. see that DDE just bought one as well. Uh, he's making me start making some uh, life plans so I can get mine one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll need the channel to grow a bit more. If you want to help us do that, make sure you give us a thumbs up because that tells YouTube that uh, other people like you might also like this video. So we're in front of Alistair Bowles cars here. Alistair Bowles actually used to work for McLaren dealerships years ago and since he left them about seven years ago, I think he told us, he's actually sold 450 McLarens. So he's one of the leading independent McLaren dealerships in the UK and he's got some incredible cars. That Ford GT40 is uh, their personal car but the rest of them are all for sale. It's just wicked seeing them and he was telling us an awesome story about how uh, he was pretty key in starting up Knightsbridge McLaren and how uh, there was this little guy who came up to him and was like, oh hi, I'm Tim, do you mind if I fill some of your cars? And it turned out that that person's Shmi 150, so now he's like this massive YouTuber and they're still friends today. So if our <laughs> channel blows up, then that'll be all down to Alistair then, because basically you meet Alistair and your channel blows up, Exactly, right? there we go. And then you'll have a <laughs> McLaren Senna. Some more cars have arrived. Honestly, like when these two event stores showed up. The presence, the presence alone is crazy. You see, they're both special editions. So the yellow ones are the 50th anniversary, and the other ones are the SVJ Roadster. Whatever, forget burnouts, I'm just gonna do a low pass flyby and swing the chopper around and put it down there. Yeah, forget your Lambos, your Aston Martins and all that. McLaren Senna's. Yeah, 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 just, just fly in on a helicopter. That is a flex. Right, so uh, now we found a few very, very interesting cars. Track special. So I asked Dad this question earlier. If you could take any car home here, like you can't change the spec, you can't, oh, oh yeah, I'll get the most expensive one, sell it and get all the rest. No, if you could take one car home here today, what would it be? I think it would be the SVJ, the green one. Yeah, that's fair enough, they are very cool cars. I'm an idiot and I wouldn't take a great car like that. I'd probably take this right behind us. Gen 1 Gallardo Superleggera, one of my dream cars. The original 5 litre, which sounds like an early F1 car. It's just got the raw driving experience, that single clutch gearbox. All of these new SVJs, all the lines and everything, they're awesome, but I'd have something like this. So speaking of track specials, there's so many here today, like that Purple Mante Spider, that 600LT, 675 lt 765 lt ACR, SVJ, Speciale Aperta, there's too many to name, there's so many lightweight track specials here, and there's something so special about that. Not everyone takes their track special on the track, but it's about that driving experience and the, the heritage and the knowledge that's gone into making a car perform so well and have it on the road, and I think that's just what makes a lot of these cars special. I think that's one of the biggest things that really made you want to choose that GT is the rarity and the fact that it's a track special. Another thing I quite like about it is in some ways it's kind of subtle. To a lot of people it's just an R8 but then if you know your cars then you know it's actually a lot stiffer, lower, lighter, more powerful 
and rare like there's only 333 in the world there's only 24 registered on the road in the UK I don't think even the original 33 are all in the UK anymore no, some of them have definitely been shipped overseas yeah they've gone missing or they've been crashed one of the two <laughs> One of the things we should mention is we're here actually raising money for charities. All made a donation and it's for a charity called REACH. Yeah, so REACH is actually a charity that helps kids with special needs and hippotherapy. They get the horses, put like a thin blanket over them and let the kids ride the horses and feel what's going on. And it helps them use their core muscles and they have different tasks and challenges that they have to complete. So it's really nice to support a charity like that. Uh, and it's actually all run here uh, where we're at today. So that's another nice aspect of it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually not just flexing cars. It's actually putting these cars on show to attract the public and therefore raise even more money. And it's not just for young children, it's also for adults as well. It's a very, very different but highly effective way of helping someone who can't walk get back to walking. Right, so we just bumped into Brad, who is the founder of SCC Private Members. How's it going for you today? It's good. Um, it's the furthest meet we've ever had this part of the world and, and the turnout's been great. It's really for a really, really good cause. As you can probably tell, the, the cars we've got are just, just amazing. Yeah, have you had a good time? Yeah, it's been great. And the quality and the variety of cars in the club, I think, is one of the best things about it. I noticed you've got a Morgan here. Yes. Is that what you drove down today? I did. I really like the, the, the spec, the colour, the matte wheels. The, um, it's great. A 315 horsepower per ton, per ton. which is amazing. So behind us we've got the GT3 RS, another track special. I really like it. This is the new version. This is the 99... 99-99. We've got the, uh, <laughs> just here, the previous generation GT3 RS. But do you know what's funny, right? See this one? If you were to go out, let's say, on this car, just go out and put a carbon bonnet on it, people would think, oh, rice, sir. That's, that's rice, you can't really do that. Because oh, Porsche do it, it's cool. You can get yep. away with it. It's, it's interesting, the way, like, having an exposed carbon bonnet aftermarket was one of those things that was very in fashion before it kind of went out of fashion. It's now coming back in fashion again. And even manufacturers are doing it. But it's just cool when a manufacturer does it, you know? Does that mean we can put a carbon bonnet no, in our car no. now? Right, one of the interesting cars in our group is this Noble right here. I actually owned a part of a Noble because one of my first cars was a Mark I Ford Mondeo 2 litre SI and guess what? They actually have the same rear taillights on the Noble. Now this is actually my first time seeing the Rolls-Royce colour lens in person and look at this interior, it's just luxury. Look at this carbon fibre here and just the way the interior is designed. Got to have the starlight roof if you get one of these, don't you? So what a beautiful spot. <laughs> oh no way! Behind us there's a McLaren Artura which hasn't even been delivered to customers yet so I'm really shocked it's here. I think this is my first time seeing it like in person. I think all the things that are holding me back from seeing it online, they're gone. Like yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I think it's a perfect blend of their previous 570S and the 720S to like combine the design style into one car that's just showing the future of McLaren. And the technology in it as well with the hybrid system and everything. The actual motor itself is just tiny, just sandwiched between the crankshaft and the gearbox. It's just phenomenal. And of course, that's the only way you can reverse with electric power because there is no reverse gear. It's such an impressive looking car. Like you say, it's that evolution, taking it further forward hinting at a bolder future, but still respecting the design language of the past. I really like it. It's just started to rain a little bit, and everyone with a convertible just run back to their cars. Everyone's trying to get their roofs up. <laughs> it's a shame because the weather was really good. I think we're having a bit of a race between the uh, Ferrari and the uh, our GT. I think the GT is winning. <laughs> Anyone with a convertible immediately switched on their engines and that was it. Had to go up. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our roof up. Brad's got to put the roof up on the Morgan now. Um, so how fast does this roof go up? Are you having to use your physical hands to do that? <laughs> 
It's actually reasonably quick, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we would offer to help you, but then that'd be far less entertaining for the camera. <laughs> the end of our time here. It's been a huge amount of fun, I really enjoyed the drive and the cars here have been incredible. Dream, dream cars really. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the level of cars here today so it was awesome. And to support such a great cause as well, I think it's the best bit of all. Yeah, it's been such an awesome day.